citizens wishing to speak to a public hearing or citizen comment periods are generally allowed three minutes to speak. Persons appearing before council are not allowed to campaign for public office, promote private business ventures, use language of a personal nature which insults or demeans any person, including comments directed at public officials or staff members that are not related to their official duties. Address or question staff members directly. All questions are to be directed to the president of council. Failure to adhere to the guidelines may result in speakers forfeiting any remaining time and further disciplinary actions as necessary, which could include barring from attendance at future meetings of the city council for a period of six months. Thank you, Mr. President. Next speaker is Penny Parham. I want to say good evening, and I hope a lot of you all will not be here soon. There are some terrible things going on in the city of Richmond. Number one, what Mr. Dorsey was saying, the local election is null and void. There is a lot of corruption going on. And I'm running for the 6th District. I am Theodora Parham, and I'm going to get more votes than you think. In my ballots, um, I found eight names of people, and I'm going to call them off to Quisha Child, Robin Masterville, James Carter, Margaret Johnson, Ms. George Ms. Johnson, Jetta Goodnight, um, Ms. Esther Ms. Milner. I'm calling these people names off because Ms. these people are legally registered to vote, and Ms. the Ms. register's office said that they were felons. Ms. You may not come up here and campaign. You may come up here. Versus it's not about campaigning. It's about these people having the right to vote. And the register's office says these people are eligible to vote. And you all are not going to stop them because they're illegal. The next thing I want to say is you all eat real good up here. Well, the people are poor. We, the people for Teddy Parham, feel like you need to start bringing your own meals. From now on, we expect you to bring bag lunches. Number three, we're asking you to take the prayer out of this council because your friends with the nonprofit organizations have taken advantage of the program. I want the um, agent for the Secret Service, the agent for the FBI, the agent for the Internal Revenue to know that we have evidence, we have a lot of evidence. You all sent the, Byron Marshall sent the cameraman out, the only man with the camera besides these guys, but that's the same dirty thing you did when I went to that Democratic meeting for We Were Trammel. Some of you all talked to, met these people in the office with Dwight Jones, a hundred dirty people talked to Reva Trammell, our council person, like she was a darn dog. And they dog Marty out, and the way they talked to Reva Trammell, they all should go to jail. You hear what I say? And one girl had the nerve to say to me, I wish you would mention my name. Well, you got your wish. Jackie Bowling of RCAP has been committing voter fraud for the last 20 years. Jackie, I want you to know you got your uh, wish so that people can investigate. If you're going to use names. I need to tell the truth. I, to I found out Ellen Robinson that you we have paid you. people to turn our house up for a whole year. People have confessed that you paid them to hurt me like that. You don't have to be afraid of me. You have 30 seconds. I don't bite. You pay people to destroy everything that I work for. I dress down and there I must be beautiful or something. You got to do all that to hurt me. You scared that the real people will vote me in? Well, guess what, boo? It's going to happen. You get ready. Like I said, at that jail, I hope they build a special suite for some of you all. And Reva, you do good. Marty, you do good. Most of the people do not go out of their area to work. Anybody that calls you all for help, you all come. Keep up the good work. Don't let that girl Dawn Page and that dirty crew discourage you.
Because people love you and what you do. Ms. Carl, your time is up. Your time is up. Your time is up. Your time is up. Okay, we're going to go. The rest are going to recess. We're going to recess. Don't put your hands on her. Don't put your hands on her. We're going into recess. Don't put your hands on her. Okay, into recess. You go to recess and don't come back. And that's Theodora. Theodora. You may call me Teddy. Look, I'm here tonight about another serious issue about my vehicle that was stolen in June of last year. And I have some paperwork that I'd like to pass around to you guys. My vehicle was put in the shop because I'm getting old. I'm tired of getting on the ground, changing oil and transmission fluid. I decided to take it to the shop because I had always worked on my own. Mm -hmm. Curred it to the shop, 133P East Bell Boulevard, next to the police station, and it was on the lot with nine other vehicles. The guy says to me, we can fix it, leave it, 
And I asked him about the decals. They ran out the next day. So I put the new decals on, and he gave me the razor to scratch it off. And lo and behold, he said, come back Monday. We'll have it ready. I called Monday. No answer. Called Tuesday. No answer. Called Wednesday. I got on a bus from Howland Park, went to Southside Plaza, walked up Bell Boulevard, and my car, along with the other nine cars, were gone. Now, how do you reward a good driver? I have been driving over 50 years, haven't had a ticket in 40 years, no suspensions, but this guy stole my van. I called Seabirds, they didn't have it. I called the police tow lot, they didn't have it. So by me being a Tom girl, I worked at the junkyards, I called around and I found out that my car, my van with the air conditioning and the tinted windows had been taken over to Sims Meadows, used to be Pex. And this white boy was standing there with a picture of my van. He had a false title. They crushed my van and I have been waiting for a whole freaking year for the police to get this thing in court. They drug the case all the way through a year now. I went in on May the 1st. The white boy stood up and admitted he had stolen my vehicle along with these other vehicles. How did he get bond? <laughs> he was a white boy. Y'all need to start treating people differently in this city. People are getting tired of discrimination. The judge says to me in court, we're going to give you $1,000. And I say, what? For my van, rust-free, air-conditioned, tenant windows, where am I going to find a van like that for my health? I've had five heart attacks and a stroke. I'm not ashamed to tell you. I was brutally beaten by a deputy sheriff, Kevin Ferguson, in uniform, pepper sprayed in my face as I stood outside waiting with some elderly friends. We were going to brunch and jazz. I'm a musician. That sucker sprayed me, double thrust punched me in my chest like Bruce Lee, knocked my bony tail clean over there to that camera, and he never got a day. They hid it. I never got a dollar, and I want to know why the police are telling me since my license, they have suspended my license, put a $700 fine on me, I've been waiting for DMV to send me paperwork. They never sent me a notice. My time is not up. I'm walking, boo. You get over it. Yeah. I say this. They have All suspended right. my license, right. had a $700 fine on it, right. and they are telling me that I cannot. Um, there's somebody in the back that can help you, Cecilia Garner. I just want the people in the city of Richmond to know that DMV does not send out <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Palm, that's it. Should we call Lisa? Or just let her go? Hmm? Yeah. What is he giving her? No, come on. Miss Parm, Miss Parm, you're going to have to, Miss Parm, Miss Parm, your, your time is up. You're going to have to, you're going to have to sit down. Okay, we're going to get her out. Yeah, all right, let's call a five minute recess. Hey, we're calling a five minute recess.
Okay, recess is over. Madam Clerk, would you call the next speaker? I mean, Mr. Clerk. I know, I make that I need a excuse. sign up here that says Mr. I know, I tell you. It's been one of those nights. The next speaker is...
both behaviors appear to be going to be established because of the behavior of this person. No, it was not violent. No, it was not threatening. Yes, it was very, very destructive to the entire proceedings of the council. People come down to council with serious issues. People come down to council, just as they will tonight, to speak to patients and to have that disruptive um, behavior going on in the council meeting is not fair to the other citizens sitting in the audience. It's not fair that you didn't make that clear. It's not fair that you wrote that first letter to find yourself, but they're asking us, or let us know anything about it, and now it's not fair that this person did not know the process, that the city attorneys just gave us, that that person or others are not here to even hear what he had to say. So I want to bring it up that we, that we let her come back, provided that she does not disrupt another council meeting, or you did not let her speak or let her be here. Because I don't think the procedure was done there. And Madam Chair, Mr. Yes, President, I'll respond. May I ask a question to the attorney? Please. Mr. Attorney, are there any requirements in the city code, the charter, or in our adopted rules that dictate a time when an appeal from the president's decision may be taken? Uh, there are no time limits that are specified by state law or by the rules of procedure themselves. Uh, when your rules are silent, uh, Robert's rules are intended to apply. Robert's rules ordinarily contemplate an appeal uh, during a meeting. Uh, this occurred between meetings, and so this is as appropriate time to bring it up to So, this letter was sent out, I think, on November 7th. The next meeting, from actions taken the previous, uh, two weeks previous, and... And every member of council got a copy. And November 12th would have been the next meeting of council. Is that right? Yes, that would have been, that would have been the next meeting. What I, what I don't know is when either the individual or the members of the council actually received the letter. Madam President. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I need to know from, from the attorney also. Uh, there's nothing in our rules that says anything about two times disruptive, is it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. Yes, sir. I can read it again. Um, rule it says rule procedure uh, any? with second expulsions. Mm -hmm. that this second is, expulsion. This remedy is available when a person is expelled for a second time. This person hadn't been expelled before. Mm -hmm. Twice. Twice. Yeah. That was her sec that was the second time. Wait. Two. Is it kind of four weeks ago? I mean, it must have been four weeks. The letter indicates uh, July 9th and then again on October 22nd. Uh, I do not believe no, the rules do not require to be in consecutive meetings. It simply requires two meetings. No, I get that, but I'm not aware of it being. Still, because it was quiet down, but not a spell. What, what goes to be expelling? It doesn't actually just go out of the building. It doesn't require expulsion. It requires the president council shall order the expulsion. So if the president says, uh, in, in umpire speak, that's it, you're out of here, even if the person refuses to go, the order of expulsion has been made. That last question, um, and that is, uh, for an appeal to be brought by a member of the council, is that a simple motion? Yes, sir. Can we vote on it in, uh, So, Mr. Trammell, uh, Can we vote I, on it in formal, or can we do that formal? You can do it right here. Mr. Trammell might want to put together a case first before she puts a motion on it. Well, it doesn't have to be tonight, does it? Mm -hmm.
not export them, but not twice in a row. And maybe I should not have said something, but I did because I felt like I knew that she didn't have the money for that. So I didn't know that. Well, why don't you and I talk about it? I'm sorry, what? You said, why don't you and I talk about it offline, not here? But we'll talk about that at the meeting. I got your time. 